Now, the skill of adding and subtracting thirds is identical to the skill of adding or subtracting or simplifying algebraic expressions. Algebraic expression, if I want to simplify it, I group like terms. So 2x plus 3x makes 5x, and 5y minus 4y makes positive y. Now, I'm going to do exactly the same thing with thirds. So look at all the coefficients, they're the same. 2, 2, 5, 5, 3, 3, negative 4, negative 4. I've replaced the x's with root 3's, and I've replaced the y's with root 7's. They're going to behave the same way, because the x's and the y's might have just meant root 3 and root 7. So to add these or subtract these, 2 root 3 plus 3 root 3 is 5 root 3, and 5 root 7 minus 4 root 7 is plus 1 root 7, which is just root 7. It really is as simple as that. So that was our first example right here. This was just sort of showing you algebra and how it works. This one here is a little bit different because you can see we've got a root 2, a root 5, a root 8, and a root 45. So it feels like we have no common terms. We can't simplify this. But root 8 can be simplified, and root 45 can be simplified. And that's the trick here. We simplify and then we add or subtract. So 3 root 2 is still 3 root 2. Nothing special there. 2 root 5 is just 2 root 5. I can't simplify that. Now, negative 2 root 8 is the same as negative 2 root uh, 4 times 2. And negative root 45 is the same as negative root 9 times 5. Which means that all of this simplifies to 3 root 2 plus 2 root 5 minus that 4 comes out and gets multiplied by the 2. So 4 times, or negative 2, is negative 4 root 2. And that 9 comes out and we get negative 3 root 5. And then we just group all of our like terms. 3 root 2 minus 4 root 2 is negative root 2. And 2 root 5 minus 3 root 5 is minus root 5. Now, this one is more complicated again because we need to simplify everything that we see here. So, 2 root 2 is the same as 2 root 4 times 3, plus uh, this is the same as 5 root uh, 100 times 2, and this is the same as negative 3 root 25 times 3. All right, so the 4 is going to come out as a 2. 2 times the 2 that comes out is going to be 4. We get 4 root 3 there. The 100 is going to come out as a 10. 5 times the 10 is going to be 50. So 50 and then a root 2. And then this, the 25 is going to come out as a 5. Negative 3 times 5, negative 15 root 3. And finally, we can group these like terms. 4 root 3 minus 15 root 3 is negative 11 root 3 plus 50 root 2. We know how to add and subtract thirds. We can do any kind of adding and subtracting sort of like a difficult question here, complex question. So we have an isosceles triangle here. We don't know the length of the base, but we do know the perimeter of the triangle is 7 root 6. So we know that the perimeter is going to be equal to the sum of all the sides added together. So the perimeter is 7 root 6. This side is root 54, this side is root 54, and this side is x. Alright, so we know root 54 plus root 54, that's going to be 2 root 54 plus x. And then um, from here, we can start rearranging this to isolate x. So we can subtract 2 root 54 from both sides. So we'll get 7 roots minus 2 root 54 equals x minus. Uh, now we can probably go one step further here because I'm looking at 54 and I'm saying to myself, can that be simplified? Um, what can I think of? 6 times 9 would be 54, so we can simplify that. 7 root 6 minus 2 root 9 times 6 equals x. My equal signs aren't lining up. It's quite rude. All right, our 3 comes out. 9 becomes a 3 when it comes out. So we get 7 root 6 minus 2 times 3 
minus uh, 6, and then that root 6 is left over. 7 root 6 minus 6 root 6 is root 6. Root 6 equals x. The length of this side is root 6. So now that you understand that thirds are just numbers, we can use them in any kind of question that you've come across in the past, area, volume, surface area, perimeter, all sorts of questions. You can do those with uh, thirds as well. All right, good luck.